in this lesson. All right, also 3.6 is pretty much the same as 3.5, although the difference is they're giving it to me in the form of a word problem, and I got to figure out my equations before I can solve them, okay? So this is called solving applied problems. And I did a little triangle one the other day at the end of y'all's class. So I'm going to do the other two because there's only like three of them in the homework for mm -hmm. three six. The first two just having you translate a statement just to see that you know what words mean. You know, like some and different. So there's two tricky ones I'm going to play with. And this one deals with numbers, and then the other one deals with like milligrams. So the first one we'll do. So this one starts out, the sum of three numbers is 58. So the sum of three numbers is 58. Second equation they're giving me, the difference of the largest and smallest Is uh, 52. Then the last equation it says the sum of the two smaller numbers is 13. So the sum of two smaller numbers is, uh, I want to say, 13. So I've got my three equations. So I'm going to write them out using X, Y, and Z's. So the first one, the sum of three numbers, that means they're being added. So I know that X plus my Y plus my Z is going to equal 58. Now, y'all, here's where I'm going to do something. They're talking about large and small numbers. So I'm going to let the X's be my largest numbers. And the Z's over here will be the row for my, or the column for my smallest numbers. Okay. So the second one said the difference of the largest and smallest is 52. So the difference of the largest and my smallest. So I'm going to come in here. Difference means subtraction. And then I said that was 52. Which means we treat the y on the equation like it's a zero because there's no y there, okay? Then finally, the sum of the two smaller numbers is 13. So that's going to be my y and z because that's my middle and smallest. So that'll be a y plus the z is going to equal 13, which means this x would be a zero for this one, okay? So I got three equations. Got the three equations. So now we got to figure out what do we want to eliminate? So I'm looking at this one and I got a positive Z, negative Z sitting here, and then a negative Z and a positive Z. So I'm going to eliminate the Z's first. Okay, so I'm going to try to eliminate the Z. So what I'm going to do first is add row one and two to eliminate that Z. So I'm going to add row one and two to get rid of that Z, okay? So here's my row one, X plus Y plus Z equals 58. Row two is an X 
negative z equals 52. Which one I did, it got rid of a z like I needed, right? So I got an x and an x, which gives me 2x plus my y. The z's canceled. And then when we got 58 plus 52 would be 110. This now will be what I call my equation four. So now we gotta find equation five. Now y'all here's the thing, since I used row one and two to get rid of the Z the first time, I've now gotta use row three with one of these rows to get rid of the Z this time. And I'll tell you what, those ones will knock it out right there, or you could do, well, that's all I could do, right? That's only two that got really negative signs that I need. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to add two and three. So two was the X minus the Z equals 52. Three was the Y plus the Z equals 13. And I'll tell you what I like about these is you can pick any of them three letters to get rid of first. Y'all don't have to follow mine. I just picked them because I seen the positive and negative sitting there. Okay. And hey, watch what happens. The X comes down, the Y comes down, the Z's cancel, and this will all equal, let's see, what's that? 65. And it's now what I'm going to call my equation five. So now I'm going to put equation four and five together and solve a system of two variables. So I had 2x plus y equals 110, x plus y equals 65. So that was my four and my five. Well, as they stand, nothing eliminates. So I've got to change one of these rows. So I'm going to try to keep this X positive when I'm done by making this row negative. So I got a positive Y, I'm going to make this a negative Y. So what I'm going to do is multiply row five by negative one and then add to row four. I could have done that to the first one, but if I multiplied my top equation by negatives, I ended up with some negative variables when I'm done. And I try to keep my variables positive as much as I can. Because y'all know losing the negative is the number one thing in my head. All right, so let's multiply row five by negative one. That would give me a negative x minus y equals negative 65. So one time I made one change all the signs to a negative. Add that to the 2x plus y equals 110. When we get done with this, we should be down to one variable. And see why I picked that row, because 2x and negative x give me 1x. Those lines are going to cancel. So that was 110 minus 65. 45. And it's positive. But look at that. The X is done. X is now 45. So that's an easy one to plug it in too, ain't it? X plus Y equals 65. So now we'll back substitute. And I'm just going to pick this one. X plus Y equals 65. 45 plus y equals 65. And then we're going to get the y really quick by subtracting that 45. So that y is uh, 65 minus 45 gives me what? 20. The calculator fit them out? I'm trying to see. <laughs> So now I got to find, I got the X, I got the Y, I need to get the Z. Look, I can use any three of these equations. That is pretty easy. 
It says y plus z equals 13. So let me bag substitute. But remember, y'all can pick any equation you want to substitute into, okay? So I know y is 20, so 20 plus z is going to equal 13. I always try to pick ones that I think are the easiest to solve them to, you know, get rid of. Um, so let's subtract 20 and be done with this one. So it looks like Z is what a negative uh, seven. So our solution would be X, which was somewhere up here, 45. Z, I mean, Y was 20, and then Z was negative seven. Now, on the math lab, it'll ask you the three numbers in order from smallest to largest. Oh no, the three numbers from largest to smallest. So from largest to smallest, oh hell, I'm in the right order. 45, 20, negative seven. So in math lab, I don't think you have to put them print in print, you just put the numbers in the blank and be done with it. Now question, when entering this into the matrix, okay. who would you like on the- In the matrix part, or the Kramer? I mean, into the- Kramer, the one that the program one? Yeah. Uh-huh. One enter, one enter, one enter, 58. Uh -huh. One enter, zero enter, negative one enter, 52 enter, zero enter, one enter, one enter, 13 enter. It'll fit that out. I'll figure out that little video. Let's see if I download the programs into your calculator, I'll send the Kramer video later and it shows you how to put them in there. It may find them out later. <laughs> and then I'll see this. I've seen another video, I think, that was just doing it on the regular matrix in the calculator, but it's a little bit more tedious. But the Kramer, you just fit in the numbers. No letters, just numbers, and boom, it'll spit it out. Is that what you just told me? It looks like I got an answer right. You said 111, 1, 1, 58, 1, 0, negative 1, 52. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 0. Mm -hmm. All you do is regular matrix. So now that you got the matrix in there, you quit mm -hmm. the screen, second quit, and then you got to go second matrix math and go down here and get RRE test. Mm -hmm. Enter and then go get that matrix again. I get the second matrix again. So you did three by four, just enter in. I'm going to hit enter. No drop. Let me go back to your matrix. So one, 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 58, one, zero, negative one, 52. Oh, there's a negative 13 that's getting you. That need to be a positive 13. Now, go get the RREF. Mm -hmm. And then get that matrix. So you hit that button last. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So just one sign. But just one sign. It's all, it's all it is, one sign. That's why I got songs about signs. That's what kept on doing it by hand. I was like, I mean, I was getting, and I was like, wait a minute. When I see the, the decimal, I was like, hold up, something is off. And it was always either negative. Uh, but even by hand, you got to worry about one side. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was doing even by hand, you had to worry about one side. Yo, I've had it where I was listing out my, all my numbers, and if you get one number off or one sign off, you won't catch it until you get about to the end, and mm -hmm. you're like, oh, hold on. I shouldn't be getting decimal answers or fractions. Right. Because all these should come out in whole numbers. Although there's one, I think, that's a two by two system with two variables, it does have like a fractional answer. But it's only one of the two systems, okay? But it kind of never spit out some fractions too, so. All right, so now we're going to do the one with the cholesterol. So, by eating one egg, one cupcake, one slice of pizza, 
a child will consume 301 milligrams of cholesterol. Then it says, if your child eats three cupcakes, four slices of pizza, he or she takes in 96 milligrams of cholesterol. And then it says, by eating three eggs, one cupcake, the child consumes 836 milligrams of cholesterol. So the question on this one is, how much cholesterol does each of these items contain? Now, on your matrix, it'll be the same thing. 1, 1, 1, 3, 0, 1, 0, 3, 4, 9, 6. You just got to put zeros where I don't have no food, okay? Now, I'm going to set mine up as X plus Y plus Z equals 3, 0, 1. The next one will be 3, Y plus 4z equals 96. So I'm just letting the eggs be my x's, the cupcakes be my y's, and the pieces will be my z's, okay? Down here I got what, three x's plus one y is going to equal 836. So, three equations, and similar to what I had with the numbers, but I don't have nothing that's really jumping out at me to be canceled out on this one. So, we would have to take a letter. Um, I'm going to show you all a trick. I'm either going to get rid of the X's or the Z's, okay? So I'm going to show you a trick. If I can get rid of the X's or the Z's, I'll have an equation that matches them in a second. <laughs> so we can eliminate a little work on this one, okay? So now the X's are right here. I'm going to get rid of the X's by multiplying row one by a negative three. And make that negative three cancel with that three there, okay? So multiply row one. By negative three and add two row three. All right, y'all. Multiply row row one by negative three will give you negative three x minus three y minus three z equals lower. That's gonna be big. What's that? Nine hundred and three. <laughs> Now, number three comes down as a 3x plus a 1y equals 836. When I get done with that, that'll be my row four. So here we got rid of the x's like we wanted. Negative 3y plus y would give you negative 2y minus the 3z. That's going to equal. Hmm. Six, four, and three. What's that? Negative sixty-seven. I now would have what I call my row four. Yo, here's what's nice. Row four was negative two y. Minus 3z equals negative 67. Is there not a row I can bring over that already looks like that? I didn't use row 2 yet, but look at row 2. It's got y's and z's like I mean. It's already got the x gone. So I can automatically bring row 2 over here as my second equation. I did not have to 
eliminate a variable on that because the variable was already gone. Okay. Now, how I pick to do that with the Z's? Then when I was done, I'd have had X's and Y's like this one, and I could have used it for my second. So if you pick a variable that only has two of them, more than likely, when you're done with that, you want to match the other equation. You don't have to do it all again. Okay. Now, nothing eliminates yet. And I got two and three and three and four. So to eliminate either the X's or the Y's, I've got to change two rows. Because there's no way I can turn a three into a two or a two into a three. But the smallest number I can turn these into would be a six each of them, right? So I want to turn these into sixes. So I'm going to multiply this row by three and this row by two. And I don't even have to worry about the negative because one's negative already and one's positive. So I just have to change those numbers. So y'all just multiply the first row up here by three, you get negative six y minus nine z equals a big number, two or one. <laughs> multiply the next row by the two, I get a six y plus eight z equals Guess what? We able to get rid of the wires, right? They're gone. So I got negative nine plus eight gives me a negative one z. That's going to equal a negative nine. So one more move and we're done with that. We're going to divide those sides of this so that z is a positive nine. Now, I know the Z, I can jump right into this one. Or you can use the one with all the negatives. I don't like all the negatives. So I'm going to use this one because it's got Y's and Z's. So I'm going to back substitute. So I got 3Y plus 4 times Z, which is 9, is going to equal 96. Now let's see, four times nine. I'm gonna give us a thirty-six. Uh, well, not bad. Let's subtract that thirty-six. All right. So now three y is sixty. And y'all turn that three y into a one y. By dividing by the three, and it looks like y is 20. So the Z was pizza. Pizza had nine milligrams per slice. Y was the cupcake, so they had 20 milligrams per cupcake. So the big one must be the egg, y'all, right? <laughs> now, I can go back to this one to get my X, or I can use this little one here to get my X. I think we'll use the little one. So I'm going to back substitute. So that was 3X plus Y, which is 20, is going to equal 836. Now I'm going to Divide, uh, subtract 20, and then I want to divide this one. So let's see if I subtract 20. I get 3x equals 816. So I guess that's one to divide, right? So let's divide by 3. So them eggs were quite a bit more uh, cholesterol, right? They're 272 per egg versus 20 per cupcake versus 9 per pizza. Now, you know, at the end, it's probably going to have you say how many cholesterol was in the eggs equals 
PC equals and then it cuts case. So that's sort of why I get my lines over here and I say, well, this X is my X and Y is in Z. Okay? So that's all of those. So pretty much the same as 3, 5. You just had to figure out your equations. So now we're going to do a little graphing. Have y'all ever graphed any qualities? Were you shaded in the graphs? No. I think I do. <laughs> hey, any of y'all want a PPC kit? system of equations. And there's only one that we give y'all with a system. 
So let's get good at doing the single line first and shading them, and then we'll work the system. All right, y'all. So here we go. We're going to grab the inequality. I have for number one, y is greater than x minus four. So I'm going to draw a graph over here. That'll be my x and my y. I'll number it after I see what kind of numbers I get. I'm going to try to keep them small though. Now, all I got to do is pick two x's, solve for those two y's, and that's enough points to draw a line. So I think I'm going to use a zero, and I'm going to use a four. But you can pick anything you want. I just know because I picked a four, four minus four is zero. Mm -hmm. So I know that y value is a zero. And if I put a zero in there, I get the negative four. Okay. Which, these would be intercepts. That's the y-intercept and that'd be an x-intercept because they got zeros, okay? So this ain't very big, so let me go about five. All right, zero, negative four is on the y-axis at negative four right here. And then I got four zero, which is on the x axis at four. So now I need to figure out do I want my line solid or dotted? So here's the conditions for the lines. Do you got an equal sign under that inequality? No. All you got is one of these, right? right. So since I got one of these, it's going to be a dotted line. So we're going to make this a dotted line going through here. Yo, the second question. Do I want to shade this above the line or do I want to shade it below the line? Exactly, because here we said if we had greater than, which I do have, we're going to shade above the line. So now you would just come in and shade the graph above that line. That means anything that is shaded makes that a true statement. Anything that's not shaded would make it a false. What's this point right in the middle? Zero. Zero, zero. And it's shaded, right? Is, is zero greater than zero minus four true or false? Well, zero is definitely greater than negative four, so it makes it true. So you can usually just pick a point to test it if you want to. That way you know you say it's the right area. Now, this point right here is zero, negative five. So if I put that in, is negative five greater than zero minus four true? No, it's false. But we knew that because we didn't shade it. Okay? And that's what I meant. There is infinitely many solutions to these, but that's why we're shading all those answers, okay? And I'll send y'all a nice video on how to do that on the calculator. Okay. You can shade on the calculator, okay? There's only one equation you can't solve on the calculator, and that's the one with the X's only. So the calculator set up for the Y equals stuff. So there's a way in the calculator to all right, y'all, hang on a second. Let me pull my calculator up here a second. Y'all want to stop my share for a second, and I'm going to pull my calculator up. So let me, it might not let me though, because I didn't open it yet. All right, so I'm going to try to bring my calculator up, and we can watch it on the TV, and I'll show you what I'm doing, okay? And let me get it where they're seeing it too on here.
All right, so let me go to my Zoom here. All right, y'all, I'm going to share another screen with the calculator to show you how to do this on the calculator. All right, so y'all should be seeing my calculator on your screen now. And I'm going to do this from my head. Y greater than X minus 4. So I would go to Y equals on the calculator. And it makes it red when I'm clicking stuff. So I got Y equals. And I'm going to put in X minus 4. So I got X minus 4. Right? Now... I want to tell the calculator to shade for me, okay? Now, I'm going to arrow left until I'm to the left of the Y1. Over here blinking. Now, yours won't have the colors on it because it's older. But once you get over there, hit enter. Now, yours, let me show you what you're going to get. I'm going to go to my line for you. So let me go down on mine. Now, on the lines, you're going to hit enter. All right, let me go back, y'all. It didn't like something I did. Oh, I'm not clicking it right. Oh, it's froze is what's happening. Dang it. Oh, all righty. All right, let me go back to it and try this again, okay? All right, so I'm back there. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to go down to my line. And I go through this. Shade above looks like a triangle that's above. If you hit enter again, you'll get a triangle that's below. So greater than is what you use the triangle above, less than we use the triangle below, okay? Are you done? Yours would be just like mine. Yeah, I hit the enter. And then I go down to. So now now I'm arrow right. Okay, arrow right. Uh -huh. All right. So the new calculator is a little prettier, but ours will color ours blue. Okay. Now, I've got the line set. We're going to hit graph on that calculator. Oh, man, mine didn't shade. Did y'all? Let me go back. What I do? Oh, I never switched my line. That's my bad, y'all. Let me go back. I got my line. I didn't switch my line. I was telling you, and then I didn't switch mine. All right, there's my line. So now I'm okay. Enter. Now I should be able to graph it and get a line like y'all. So y'all all should have graphed across it, but it looks just like this, don't it? Now, what's nice if you do it on the calculator, watch this. You can hit second graph, and it gives you the points you can even graph. Oh, get out of here. So graph two of these points, and then on Math Lab, when you shade on Math Lab, you got to grab the paint can and drag it above the line or below it, and it'll shade it for you on Math Lab. Also, Math Lab, by default, it's on a solid line. So if you got a dotted line, you got to click to the one that's got the dots. Okay. All right. So that, y'all see how I did that on them calculators? All right. So going back to my board now. That's why I like the TV because I'm able to pick my calculators up and I'm just watch it while I go. Yeah. And then y'all got the video for me later. Thanks. All right, the next one is what gives a few people fits. 
All right, so line number two, I got 3x minus 5y is less than or equal to a negative 20. And y'all, the reason this gives people fits because it ain't solved for the y. And you just can't put that in your calculator because it don't have a 3x minus 5y equals, it's only got a y equals, okay? So I'm going to solve this for the y, and then I'll be able to put it in the calculator if I want to in brackets. Now, be careful on this one. So I'm going to show you what I would do. I want to get this y by itself. I'm going to move that 3x to the other side. Subtract 3x from both sides. X is canceled. I'll bring down the negative 5y, less than or equal. That negative 20 and negative 3x will not add together. They're not like terms. So I usually do it like this. Negative 3x minus the 20. But you can do negative 20 minus 3x. Just remember that the, uh, 3x is like your slope, your index stuff. Okay. Now, Negative 5y needs to be a 1y. So we're going to divide everybody by negative 5. Um, there's one thing I've got to do since I divided by that negative. Y'all remember? Anyone online remember? What I got to do when I divide by a negative on an inequality? I got to flip it. I got to flip my inequality symbol, right? If it's facing that way, I got to turn it around. So that this is now a greater than or equal. You got to do that every time you divide by negative on an inequality, okay? So I get a y now is greater than or equal to, well, here's two negatives. So I'm going to become a positive uh, three fifths x, and then at the end you got two negatives, so that's going to become a positive 25 by 5, give me a positive 4 x. Now at this point, if you wanted to put this in y equals, you could, and then remember, go over here, since it's greater than, you want the triangle, that looks like that for greater than, okay? So I'm going to do it by hand real quick. Now, I'm picking on this one when I pick my numbers. I will pick zero. Zero works. So check this out. What's zero times three fifths? Plus four. Remember, that's what y intercept, so that's the value of y when x is zero. Now, I'm not going to put a one here because that gives me three fifths. Don't want that. I'm not doing two because that gives me six fifths. Three won't do nothing. Four won't do nothing. But I'm going to pick a five next. So y'all watch why I pick that five. If I put a five right here, what am I going to do to the five? I'm going to cancel them out. Make it become the one. So three times one is three. And then three plus four and seven. So if you got fractions, you want to match that denominator with the x. Now, if you put it in y equals and you look for some numbers in that table, you won't get a lot of decimals until you get numbers that are multiples of five. So like five will give you a good number. The next one would be 10, that would give you a good number. Anything in between, you want to give you some ugly decimals. Now, I personally don't like graphing decimals. So when it comes to decimal land between that zero and that one. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're going to put that 0.5 out of that 0.3 or whatever. So, graphing, I try to avoid fractions and decimals. All right, so let's. So I'm 
five on my x's, and then it's like seven this way. All right, so I had zero four, that's on the y axis at four. So that's right here. Then I had five seven, so I'm going to go right five and up seven. That's going to put me at the top of my graph here. Also, I knew I was pretty good because positive slopes go uphill, negative slopes would go downhill, okay? What kind of line do I want? Solid or dotted? Because mm -hmm, you got that equals on it, right? So we got a solid line coming up here. So when I shade that above or below? Above. above. Now here's where I get people. You got to look at this one. You don't want to look at the original, okay? You got to look at the one we're actually figuring out, which is greater than, which is definitely going to shade above. Okay. Questions, y'all? I think they signed in and they went back to bed online. Right? No, I'm still here. I'm just on oh, okay. I'm here. <laughs> Got to keep up with them, don't we? Can I go right to bed? I'm going to grab one of these two special ones and then I'll give you the system where we got two. Okay. So this one I'll do like number three. It is x greater than negative four. X equals any number is a vertical line. Y equals any number is a horizontal line. I don't know if y'all remember that from the past. All right, then I'm going to grab that in about right here. Okay. Well, give me some X values. And there's only one you can give me. It's telling us x has to be negative four. No matter what the y value, this is telling me x has to be negative four. Now remember, we're using inequality, but that would be like this if you're graphing the line. Okay. Do y'all remember these? Now x has to be negative four. That means y can be any number I pick. So if you want to put some zeros and ones here, you can. If you want to put fives and tens, you can. I don't care which one for the y value, the x value will be negative four. Negative four. Now remember in the real world, X equals any number would not even be a function because it's a vertical line test, which means it fails the vertical line test, right? Mm -hmm. All right, y'all, here we go. Negative four, zero. Now, if I'm doing this on math lab, I just come over here, negative four, put me a dot, and then move up or down one and put me a dot. So negative four, one will be right here. So I know this line's going to be vertical. Do I want this to be maybe solid or dotted? Because there ain't no equals under it, so we want a dotted line right here. So now, our x is greater to the right or to the left? So you're going this way? Mm -hmm. So is negative five greater than negative four? No, I should go to the right. There you go, I'm gonna go to the right. Which means I'm gonna shade all of this 
Anything that's shaded will have an x value greater than that negative four. Now negative four is dotted, so it don't, that means negative four don't equal negative four because it's, but negative three is greater than negative four. All these x's up here, negative two is greater than negative four. All these x values, no matter what them points are, those x's will be greater than negative four. Now, when you do the y one, the y would be a horizontal. So on the y one, can I got time? I'm not going to have to. So this would be like number four. Y is greater than or equal to a negative two. Now, I'm not going to worry about x's yet, because I know what these y values better equal. Every y value better equal what? Negative, negative, negative two. So when you look at this one and say, oh, why do we pick negative four twice? Because we got to pick it every time on this one, and then we pick that negative two. So give me two more numbers to show on that. Yeah, that can be anything you want right there. Uh, you want to go five? Only reason I use small numbers because I like the graph small. Um, but math lab, you can go all the way up to 10 by 10, I think, on this. Negative 10 and 10 on math lab, I'm pretty sure. All right, so zero, negative two is on the y axis. One negative two, but no matter what, as long as you got negative two for the y value, you're going to get a line going horizontal, solid or dotted. Solid. Because uh, I'm going to have that equals on this one. So it's going to be solid coming across here. Greater than for the y's, is that above or below? Uh -huh. Above. So all this would be shaded. Now, what's nice about this one is these points on the line will make that true. That's what, zero, negative two? So if we put a negative two here, it's greater than or equal to negative two, right? So the equals is why we can count the lines on those, and that's why they're solid. Now, you know how in the calculator you're able to do. You can do the ones. Out, but you just the can't do values, it. You have to kind of work out. Yeah. That's a, just remember, it's a vertical line somewhere on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, for the last problem, I got to give you a little bit of notes real quick. And then you're just going to say for a system of equations. So for a system of linear inequalities, the solution is the double shaded region. So, like on this one, I shaded above, but what if I had a line and it's shaded like this? The double shaded would be this section right in here, where it's got both shades, okay? Let me draw one, it'll be better. So I'm looking for double-shaded regions on the calculators. You color one bloom on yours and one green on the next one. It'll double-shade it into whatever bloom green looks like. And I'll show you that on mine too, okay? Mm -hmm. So this would be y'all's number five.
graph the system of inequality. There you go. First, I got y is greater than or equal to x plus 1. My second equation is y is less than or equal to 2 minus x. So, calculator, you can call this y1, that and y2, and graph each one according to greater than and less than, okay? So I'm going to make me a couple tables here for each line. And then we'll grab that right here. So the first one, I'm going to use a zero and a one for my X because those are easy. I put a zero in there, zero plus one would give me a one for that y. If I put the one in there, I get one plus one is two for the second y. Now, I'm going to figure this one out. And now I can use the same two numbers, I guess, zero and one. On this one, though, if you put a zero in, two minus zero would give me two for the y. And then here, if you put the one in, two minus one would give me one for the y value on that. So I'm gonna plot these and see what happens. So we got small numbers. So let's go one, two, three, four. Negative four. Four up. And then four down. All right, so my first line, I'm going to plot it first. I got zero, one, which is right on that y axis at one. And then I'm going to go right one and up two for my second point. So right one, up two. So I'm graphing this first one, solid or dotted? Solid. So it's coming through solid here. Shade that one above or below? Above, so it was greater than. So technically, this line is shading all this up here. So I'm going to try to go vertical for that one and horizontal for the next one, okay? Now let's plot this line and see what happens. So I got 0, 2. That's at 0, 2 on the y axis. And then 1, 1 would be right 1 and up 1. So right 1. Up one. So that line's going to be right in here. Do you want that one solid or dotted? Solid. So this one's coming down this way, solid. Shade that one above or below? Below. Below because it's less than. So I'm going to do that one like this way. Can y'all tell what the double shaded region is? Mm -hmm. Right here, ain't it? Mm -hmm. So on the answer, you want the answer that has that region shaded only. Although this one was true for one of the lines, it wasn't true for both of the lines. Same thing up here. This was true for one line, but not both lines. The only region true for both lines is this little triangle right here, okay? So let me show y'all that one on the calculator. Just sort of now, old calculator just going to be black and black. All your lines are going to be black on that one. So y'all going to bring that calculator up. All right, so I'm going to clear this out. All right, so I'm just going to graph them both in y equals. So I'm going to go to y equals. The first one, let me clear this, was uh, x plus 1. So I'm going to put 
X plus one. And then go left, remember, until we get that um, above. So I'm already above on mine, so I'm good on that, right? Mm -hmm. So let me go down here to put my second equation in Y2. And that one was two minus X. So I got two minus X. And then we're gonna go left and make that one what? Uh, it was less than? It was saying to be down. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm gonna make a red one here. It looks like, and then right here, that's above. You want that triangle that's below, like you said, right? Mm -hmm. That's okay. Hit enter. Y'all watch this graph when I hit it. So I got red and blue. That ought to make it little purplies. <laughs> there you go. But y'all, is it not the same double set in there we got right here? And then that's the trick on those. Just uh, but here's what we black and black, but you can tell those double settings there is pretty quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now here's let's say it So that top one there, there all the way left, and hit enter until you get the triangle that's above like that. Oh. Then go down on this one and hit enter until you get the triangle that's below. And it's going to look exactly like it's going to hit that graph, but. You can tell pretty good. They, they, they darkened it up good enough for you. So, oh, that's like graphic part, <laughs> <laughs> So, any questions on that? So, y'all, that's all the material for test one. So, watch out for the big three by three equations. Um, and then remember that composition of functions was not real easy. The S O G and the G O S. Uh, yeah. Those are tricky when you got to put that whole equation into one of those. So practice those. Um, I'm going to review Monday. So I'm going to go through my study guide for every Monday. Um, and then, like I said, I'll open that test and it'll be due Sunday, which is the 21st of Sunday. We might have that very first week, I think, that first day we did, but they scattered things. You know, that's what it is. Yeah. So, y'all, I'll get this video sent out later. That's all the day, and I will see y'all Monday. All right, any lines online? No, sir, no questions. All right, let me make sure I got everybody here. I'm good. Julie. All right, I've got all of y'all, so I'll send this video out later and I'll see y'all next week. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, y'all have a good one. Watch the ice. I know y'all be careful.